Hey guys, this is my new tackle box I just picked up at uh, Bass Pro Shop. My other two um, just went disarray. Zippers wouldn't work anymore and all that sort of stuff. So I purchased this one. Um, so it's got, holds all my tackle now from what the other two had before. Zip this open so you can see. So I've got my uh, fishing chart, it gives all my sizes and all that uh, sort of stuff. Uh, my knife fits in here, which I put out on the boat. I've got my large D hooker for big sharks and stuff, but I also have my small D hooker right here. Sits in the back. And then I have all these that are holding my hooks and sort of stuff there. So anyway, um, wanted to give a short video on um, some of the things I have. Um, so these are um, some of my um, jig heads that I use um, quarter ounce jig heads with a uh, nice sharp hook and these uh, you can use bait a lot of times I'll pinch off the um, tails of the shrimp and I'll put them you've seen in my other videos where I put a shrimp on you can also use them with soft baits um, they work really good then I have my other ones which are a heavier these are half ounce sinkers um, these go I use these over the reefs and stuff for um, mangrove snapper grouper the bigger mangrove snapper you can um, put live bait on there um, you can put dead bait you can put cut bait um, and they're good for dropping down especially when the currents a little bit um, rough and then we have uh, just another uh, quarter ounce jig head uh, little different designs got a little spirally weave there to help hold your plastics on when you push them up versus this one has a little hook uh, some I haven't used the other ones yet I've always used the ones with the hook so the hook right on there seems to hold the plastic baits up to the base of the hook very well then I have uh, my larger hooks in there uh, use those for um, shark fishing or some big big grouper or goliath grouper if you're just going out for some fun of course you know you can't keep goliath grouper um, but they're fun to catch if you can get them uh, then we have our um, other six aught hooks use them for uh, rigging ballyhoo you can dual or triple the hooks um, I'm going to make videos and show you how to make those rigs on a later date, but that's what I have there. I have my live bait hooks. Um, this I'll use with about a 3 foot um, 40 to 80 pound uh, fluorocarbon leader, depending on what I'm fishing for. And you hook a live pinfish, greenback, goggle eye, whatever. Um, send that down for um, grouper, snapper, mangrove snapper. Um, even some of the uh, uh, what they call reef donkeys um, if you're on a reef we'll we'll hit those then we have our <clears throat> treble hooks right there that's uh, a lot of people call them stinger hooks we use that as a backup on our um, live bait um, circle hooks um, for catching uh, kingfish and pelagic fish that um, kind of strike short in that it helps uh, your hook up on getting the fish and then we have our um, yellow tail jigs oops ah, that one came out oh they're not cooperating I don't like the ones these here Okay, I'll have to fix that. But anyway, we have our yellow tail hooks, yellow tail jigs. 
Um, they're small, light, and put a shrimp on those or a little bit of cut bait, send them down for um, the old tail on the reef, especially the patch reefs and the keys. They work really well. And then I have, uh, for just when I'm lazy and we're fishing for some small fish, I have some pre-rigged um, wire rigs if you're um, fishing where you might be some toothy animals or you're fishing around rock structure where you don't want to get cut off. I got some uh, pre-made store-bought um, leaders that I might put on. So that's about it for my hook section. Uh, let me show you my jigs. All right, <clears throat> so here I have my um, <clears throat> small jig arsenal that I have, and these are for, um, I use them all over. You can use them out on the golf for the surface water, but we use them for backwater. Um, use them some for um, trolling around, but uh, they're good. So um, these are some of my bucktail jigs and you can see now they come in different sizes and like this i have a white one that's a bucktail jig and as the name refers that's actually <coughs> made from the tail of bucks uh deer your male deal deer um that's where they got the name from uh, but it's actually the hairs of the tails they're called bucktail jigs and they work real well um you control them for um spanish mackerel <clears throat> kingfish bluefish wahoo i mean they pretty much depending on the size the bigger they get you know the bigger fish you're going to get but um the smaller ones like this brown bucktail jig i just use on a light like a 2500 series spin reel with a um, light action rod and you cast these this is about an eighth ounce head i guess um caught my first snook ever on this one right here um cast it out by a rock and got um two snook must have been twins they're about just the same size small but um uh those are my first ones so now here is um called a feather um it's got uh, man-made nylon um, it's not a buck jig, but bucktail jig, but it's called a feather. Uh, very good for uh, caught a lot of uh, use this a lot for um, Spanish mackerel. Uh, if you ever fish on the west coast off of Cedar Key, there's a reef out there called Horseshoe Reef. We fish that this one and the white one um, a lot for our Spanish mackerel. They do well. Then we have our arsenal, our trolling lures, and they have a lip on them. Right there, you can see the lip. Um, we have several different ones with several size different lips. And the lips basically deter how deep and the action that you get from the lure. So that's a very good, fairly good sized lip. So um, I forget, but that'll probably, depending on the, um, the how fast you retrieve it or how fast you're trolling will depend. This probably goes from um, three foot to maybe seven or eight foot with that lip then we have a smaller one you can see the difference in size of that lip that's probably a two to three to five foot depth that that will troll and it's an action lure and it has the ball bearings inside that give you a little bit of um, um, noise under the water which attract fish to that and then um, you can play around with your trolling speed or your Retrieval speed to uh, make it look like a limp or a, a, um, a hurt fish. So, and then we have different styles. And then we have our top water lures, which, which will sit on the top until you retrieve them and they'll just shake on the water. They do a side to side motion on the top of the water. They're good for speckled trout, bluefish. Anything that's a surface, I mean, I've hit, I've had anything hit them, but I use them a lot for uh, when I'm trout fishing, the flats, redfish, and that. So, and then we have, go over to our spoons. Um, we have a lot of spoons. This is a gold spoon, great for um, redfish, is what I use them for a lot, but uh, the, 
just about any fish will hit. Um, the biggest thing is it flashes under the water. So if you if you ever see a pod of bait fish, and when they're swimming, the reflection of the sunlight through the water when they turn will create a flash. Especially if you have Polaroid sunglasses and you're watching, you see the bait, and then you'll see flashes going back and forth. Well, as those things twist, they mimic the flashing of the bait fish. So, and fish are subject to not only um, vibrations and stuff, but they look for flashes and stuff too. So that's one of my new, I haven't even charged, ch tried this one yet. This is brand new, never been in the water. I like the colors and the size, so I'm going to give that a shot. I also bought some small minnow type lures. They have a little bit of lip. Um, I particularly bought these because we were going to go down to the Keys fishing, but we had to delay our plans because the Keys weren't open and I've made other plans now. But um, a lot of times you'll come to um, a group of juvenile, I call them juveniles, they're a little bit bigger than peanut dolphin but um, their juveniles just may be legal 20 20 20 inches and a lot of times you'll have them around the boat and they you can throw out cut bait live bait jigs and you know they just don't seem to hit anything so um, but underneath the surface of the sarcasm weed they have a lot of little baits and stuff sort of similar to this so I bought this to try to see if that would entice them to bite but we shall find out about that and then we have a bigger lure. The weighted end will make it sit in the water more or less like this. And we do a system called walking the dog. So as you're retrieving it and you're twitching the end tip of the rod, this will go back and forth and they call it walking the dog. And you do it slow and that will entice um, some fish to bite. Of course, and then we have, um, we have our little gotcha baits now they're stuck together let me see if i can get them on stuck okay well i'm not messing with those yet i gotta i gotta figure out a better way to put those in they're tied together but anyway that's kind of my um my basic two arsenals that i have um and then for deep water okay here's some of my um these are deep divers you can do them in an airy area depending on what the structure is on the on the west coast this one right here and this one right here this is the man's lure i think this is the stretch 25 this is the stretch 50 i believe you can see how big that lip is now on the right um trolling uh speed that will dive to 50 foot uh, it's a great a great lure for um grouper if you're fishing over structure where you know there's grouper, both of those lures have been very successful with grouper in the past. Um, and I've mostly fished with those uh, on the west coast of uh, Homosassa, Crystal River area. And they've been very productive on the artificial reefs and natural reef structures out there. Um, but we troll them. Here's another one. It's pre-rigged with wire. And um, a lot of times when I'm moving spots, when I'm out to 300 foot of water and we're heading out to maybe four or 500 foot of water, I will slow troll out to the different depths and I'll be trolling these lures. And you can have uh, king mackerel hit, you can have um, barracuda hit, uh, wahoo will hit, uh, dolphin will hit if you're in an area where there's some dolphin. So wide variety of lures there for that so anyway i have a lot more stuff in here but that's pretty much um, my basic use and then let me just show you some uh, sinkers that i have in here and this is what weights down the the box kills your shoulder so i have all these different sinkers i'm gonna go over a few of them of course these are your deep your heavyweight sinkers for going deep. This is a six ounce weight. Um, I think I've got six, five, four, and then down to just a one ounce, a quarter ounce. It's a three quarter ounce. That all depends on what you're doing, how, how, um, 
fast the currents are moving in that. Um, I have our pyramid weights. Those pyramid weights are good for uh, just about anything, but I use them strictly for my sabiki rigs. I have that, and I also have this one, which is a lighter weight. It's not so heavy, so if you're fishing like backwaters where there's no current or very little current, I can use that. This is for um, heavier current. It's a one ounce pyramid weight, and I just hooked them onto the back on bottom of my sabiki rig uh, to hold them down. And then this is called a trolling sinker. <laughs> this is eight ounce. You can see it's got eyelets on both ends. Um, so you're gonna attach the one end here to your line on your rod. The other one, you're gonna put your leader that goes out to your bait. And what this does is if you're doing a four rod spread, this will help hold that. If you don't have a downrigger or a planer, this will help hold that um, depth of uh, your water trolling. So you might have a surface lure going. This one will go down a little farther. And they have bigger ones than that. They have longer ones, uh, depending on how deep you want to go and how fast you're trolling. Um, you know, you get a bigger one of those. And then you have your... These are good if you're... Um, like a lot of times, I'll just use a circle hook with a shrimp on it because I want to free line it. But sometimes the current's just moving enough. It doesn't go down fast enough. So these are called split shots. And you can see... It is split there so you put your line through that right there and then pinch it closed and it gives you just that little extra weight um, maybe to make the um, shrimp fall a little bit faster than what you want so that's about you know my basic arsenal of course um, I have stuff for trolling for ballyhoo and that stuff which uh, we're gonna go over on on another video on how to make rigs and I'll show you um, how to put skirts on how to put your make your leaders um, with a crimping tool um, and that sort of stuff and how to store them in your uh, cooler or freezer so you're uh, you can pre-make these things and get them ready to go so um, out on the water they're already done ready you don't have to mess with a bunch of time trying to make your rigs out on the water they're pre-made keep them in your cooler ready to go so anyway that's all I got for you today I hope you enjoyed this little brief uh, demo of uh, some of my arsenal that I take with me out on the boat. Uh, if you got any questions or anything, leave them in the comments. I'll get back with you on anything that uh, I might not have gone over or you're not quite sure what I meant uh, in the descriptions. So anyway, that's it for today, guys. Take it easy. God bless. Stay safe. And uh, until we see you on the next video, tight lines, everybody.